Hello Internet, welcome back to Daily Codes. Today we are going to scrape web files. Um, these are the files that we are going to be scraping today and we should be able to extract information from this file and we should be able to have data that is ready to be posted to an API by the end of this video. And uh, we are also going to be writing code that will help us to be posting data to API. So um, if you are new to this video series, previously in the previous video, what we did was to uh, write code that helps us to fetch data. And we wrote this fetch data, dot pi and uh, fuel and weather. So this one help, uh, helped us to get the data for fuel and weather and put it in the temporary folder. We also put these two tasks uh, in Airflow Dag, and uh, that Dag is supposed to be run, running every hour and fetching that data and putting it in this temp folder. So today what we are going to do is to write code that is going to help us to extract information from these files, the uh, necessary information. And in this case, it's weather price. And then after extracting that information, we also are going to write code that is going to help us to post to an API endpoint. So that's the purpose of the, of the video. So it's not easy to just look at HTML um, tags and know what you're looking for. The best way you can do is to visit where this web page is hosted and look at it on the web browser and see what you, you want to extract. So before we do that, I'm going to uh, write supporting code that will help us in uh, what I told you before, scraping the data and, uh, and uh, posting to API and just writing base classes. Then when we come to the real work of uh, scraping the data, then we're also going to write it while looking at it on, on the browser. So the first thing is to write the base classes. Remember yesterday we wrote the, the base classes, the base class for fetching data here and it is in the libraries. So today we are going also to create a base class. So the first one is going to be a base script. So all uh, files that will be used for scraping data will be using this base file. I, think, yeah, I should call it base script .py. Then it's going to use beautiful soup. So from VS4 import and we're going to import beautiful soup. Then our class is going to be a simple class which can be uh, which can be extended in the future if you're working on this project or you can scale it. I usually write these simple classes for scalability purpose. So this script. Then we define the constructor. So self. File path. So this is the file path to the the file you want to scrape. For example, here the file path will be slash tmp slash compiler weather dot html, and this should be file file path. And this is file path is a, an argument. So this whenever you're creating this class and it is uh, a string I think that is the only uh, the only variable we shall put when we are um, defining this object so when we instantiating the object then we are going to define supporting uh, function. 
read file because we know that when we want to scrape data for any kind of web scraping file we're going to write for this project we will need to read the file so we need to have a single place where we have the function that will help us to read the file then rewriting this code every time so self then the context manager open and we are opening the file path so self self dot file path and what we are going to do is to read then as f then we're going to say our file equals to f dot read so we are now reading that file then the soap is going to be beautiful soap then the the file itself that we we read so beautiful soap fine then we are going to return soap so every time we create an object with a base script we should give it a file path and whenever we call the method read file it should return for us the soap for that file which now we can scrape so that is with the base script the second supporting class or code that we are going to write will be the code that will help us to post to api so i'm going to call it um post to api post to api dot by where was i writing? i was writing in a separate screen but can still copy it remember i am just taking you through the project that i have already done so i'm looking at it on a separate screen and uh, if you want to look at that project uh, the link to the project is in the description and has everything up to the, the code for future videos so you can look at it take a look at it and see what's going on or look at it to get the, the code so post to api it's going to only use requests so we're going to import requests then the class i think by now you can guess the name of the class based on the name of the file it's going to be post to api and the constructor it's going to so if you're posting to an api you need the api endpoint so end point and the endpoint should be a string then you need data and the data should be uh, in this case it will be a dictionary then we're going to have the properties of this class self.url should be so the url we are posting to is the endpoint then self.data the data that we are posting should be the data that is provided So the supporting function that we're going to use is going to be called api post next we are going to write api get api update api all those fu supporting functions but for now what we want is to get data from the web scrape it 
post it to API, the API will save it in the database. So save. So our results when we post to the API should be requests dot post then the URL so south dot URL then the data self dot data so it's going to return uh, a result and what we need from the result is the status code so I'm going to be printing uh, you can use other logging techniques but um, for the beginning I use print to help me see uh, what I want to see but you can use logging there is a, a library called logging that you can use to log info to give you the logs so I'm going to use print results dot status code so I want to know what is the status code if it is 200 then the post was successful I also want to print uh, this is posted because we don't have the API yet we're going to have to create the API in the next video but now that we don't have it, we, we would want to see if this class is working. We are going to comment out line 10 and 11 just to see if the data is, re, re, is reaching this part of You're going to see it uh, later in this video. So this will help me just checking that data is reaching this function. So now we have created these two classes that uh, are going to help us in web scraping the next thing we're going to do is to check the the website the website where we got this I already opened them somewhere here uh, so this is the website where we are getting uh, weather information and what we want to get is the temperature, humidity, clouds, cloud base. So this is 34%, 80. I saw something different between Nairobi information. You see here there is humidity, cloud, cloud base. In Kampala, Let it load. Let's look at where we're getting the information to do with the gasoline prices. We're getting it from here. So we shall get this information, the gasoline in price per liter, like that. So here we have Kenya. There is also Uganda. Uh, you'll see how you've already seen how we fetch this. We just we just passed the um, variable here. We injected it in an F string. I could show you when we did uh, fetch fuel you see we just injected the country here and it is the one that is injected here the same for weather we injected the city here and you can see it um, here when where we are passing it in the URL when we are fetching it so this fetching was done in the previous video you can check it out. I recommend you check it out. Then today let's script. So let's go to developer tools. I'm using Google Chrome. I'll go to developer tools. Then I will click on this and I point on to what I want to get. So I want to get this. It seems to be in a table in a, a tag called t-body in a table so what i'm going to do is to get the table then this one let me go to more tools then developer tools i want to get this information so here 
and then narrow down to one of them then I can see that this is also a table uh, hopefully there is, and the table is inside this div but that div is too big so I'm going to be working with this table so let's let's start scraping the which one is simpler let's start with the the fuel Um, you can have a P break uh, in a second. Let me count. Three, two, one. Welcome back from your P break. Now let's continue with our, our scraping. So we are going to be scraping weather. And I'm going to, in my folder here, for script, there's nothing. So we are going to start with that. And we're going to say a new file. What are we scraping? Let's script. Sorry. New file. We are going to script fuel. But I don't want to write just fuel because I already have a file called fuel. So I'm going to call it script fuel dot file. Even though now the, the naming kinds of repeat inside the folder script, we already know that we're scraping that. I don't want this fuel.py to be confused by fuel. In case there is someone who is new to coding and is looking at this code, uh, I don't want them to be confused. So import JSON. I'm going to use JSON more so when. I am packaging the data to post it. Then I am leaving a space here to separate the the libraries that I have not created with the libraries that are created in our our code. So from libraries. We are going to import the base script and we are also going to import post to API. So that dot base script import base script. Then from libraries. dot post to the I import post to API so let us create our class so the class will also follow the same convention as the file name so script viewer But this class is going to inherit from this script. Inherits all the properties, even the the constructor. So let's just define other function, and the function we're going to define is script. So this function here is just uh, going to be used to script. Uh, Sorry, scrap and then it takes itself because it belongs to that class. And the other variable is going to take this country because remember, if we are scrapping fuel for different countries, yeah. So remember, we, we already have. Uh, in the script a way of reading the file so we don't need to write this we'll just call it so equals to self dot read file and it will read the file because when you're creating script fuel 
it takes the construct of this script and the construct of this script needs you to pass in the file path so when we just call this we already have this then it will just create for us that file very simple very good to use inheritance if there's a better way of doing this also you can just tell me in the comments so I want to get the the rows of this table because we are now looking at fuel let me go back to fuel and we can see that each row of this table equals to something so this these rows are the ones that i want to get the table rows for this but to be able to target this i need to target this id then from there i can now just get the table because this id this id here has only one table so i'll target this id then i get the table from it so let's say that table rows is going to be equal to soup dot find and what i'm going to find is a div element and the div element i want that is to have this property id could be a class but in this case it's id because they defined it as an id here so id and the id should be called this id is graph page left so that gives me that div and since i know there is only one table there i'm going to find dot find the, the table body t body div element then dot find find all tr which will be table rows so this will give me the table rows let me collapse this so this will give me table rows here as a list of um, elements so from this table rows what do we have i don't know if you can see it in your screen let me just confirm or oh, you can so let me make it bigger oh it doesn't make this other part big how do i make this other part bigger i don't know how to make this other part bigger but i think we can now look at this let me try to find it in our html files yeah so these are the table rows that i'm talking about so from here this is a whole table row this one here then also this is a table row so we have a list of each of this a list in a list and that is what we have here so what we want now is to iterate through each of those table rows and get the data the data that we want So I'm going to say for row in table rows. I have to remind you that I'm not doing this for the first time. I did it while following each and every tag here before I did the, this project and completed it. And now I'm just copying from another screen besides me here so don't get worried that you need to cram all these things i had to identify the id 
to this and then follow everybody this may not be necessary but leave it here because if it works do not touch it so let's iterate then we're going to say currency is going to be row dot find th that is the table header then when you find the table header for that row remember we are doing for each row so in a particular instance of the loop it picks what that row so we are finding this uh, element then after finding this element we are just going to take that because this is the currency that we are looking for there is also usd here in another row okay look look it looks like the only two two rows oh, there is also a euro here in another row so currency is, is going to be that when you get that element we for text and we are going to make this one a string just to make sure that it is a string then if it has spaces behind and in front of that string we don't want so we're going to do dot strip string as a strip function and then we're going to make it lowercase dot low so we have currency then when we look at this row here there is this is the first price and this is the second price for each row so one of them is price per gallon and then the, the other one is price per liter so the first one is pr price per liter the second one is price per gallon if you look here this is the first one price per liter and the second one is price per gallon so we're going to again um, uh, try to find the cells then uh, extract that information from these cells so let's continue so I'm going to say for for cell in row dot find and remember if you use find all it returns a list not just one element it returns lists of those elements if it is just one it will be one element but inside the list so i need to to put those prices somewhere so i'm going to have prices 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 equals to an empty list then i'm going to have prices 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 dot append and we extract information from cell so cell dot text So we are going to have um, a lot here because now each each row here has a different um, currency. We have Kenya, USD, Euro. Um, so what we want is to write a condition that if it is USD, then we we name it something. So let let me let me show you what I'm talking about. So I'm going to create here before this loop a data dictionary. Then I'm going to say if currency is in either USD because I only want USD and Euro, the I am 
I am currently not interested in analyzing it in Kenyan currency. So I only work with Kenyan, Kenyan and Euro. So I only save the data for the USD and Euro. So data dictionary. But now we want to give it a key. So I will say the first thing is to have currency then price per liter so remember this is the first item inside this because there are only two so price per liter should be equal to so it will be USD price per liter uh, euro price per liter and that information will go into the data dictionary or data dictionary. So here we're going to have this should be um, prices, but the first value. But this first value is in is is a text. It's like a string. Um, I will just confirm that it is a string so that the functions that I use in string don't fail. So replace, I'm going to replace a comma, the comma with uh, nothing because there is uh, a comma somewhere in some other, it is in thousands. It is not showing now, but if it is in thousands, then it would have a comma. I don't want it to to have a comma. Then after replacing comma with nothing, then I can now convert it into a floating number. Yeah, and that is price per liter for uh, either USD or Euro, the first thing. Then the second is price per gallon so we'll just change here i've copied and pasted gallon and this will be the second item and we are good to go then i want to add the country in data dict so data dict country is equal to country and this will give us the information we need inside this dictionary so now we are okay to post it to api so i'm going to move out of that loop i have my data dictionary here so i'm going to say post to API in this case our API which we are going to do in the next video today is Friday Saturday and Sunday now uh, I am not working I look at family on Monday we shall continue by building the API so Monday I am sure we shall have one of the endpoint for this case will be HTTP uh, it is a local host 127.0.0.1 and it will be built in fast api so 8000 slash and fuel will be the endpoint but if it changes we shall change it so we'll post data to that endpoint and what are we posting we are posting json uh, dot dump we are dumping string so dump s and what are we dumping data dictionary so this is a complete way of uh, scraping data from those files and posting them to api we are going to test this now um, if Dada name dada 
equals to main we are going to script fuel and remember we need to give it a file path so we're going to have tmp slash let's look at the files that we have here so kenya fuel price kenya fuel price dot html then dot script so this is the script that we are passing here country i can pass in country the way i want um, but let me pass it as a country code so ke so let's um, let's try to run this in terminal and you see the result the first thing i'm going to do is since we don't have this api running since we don't have this api running i'm going to comment out the result here where is it post to api i'm going to comment out this too but i only want to see this result so let me comment out this and i think we are good to go so let me go to uh, so this is the terminal i'm going to make it bigger and as i am making it bigger you can be uh, liking the video and uh, subscribing if you have not and if you have not subscribed what are you do support us support the the data engineering and data science family by subscribing so let's continue so we need to we have activated it i want to export a python file so that it doesn't bring the i have not found this package problem then we are going to run that file so python uh the file is this one script fuel and script fuel is inside script so python script then script fuel dot py and we run that So it is saying there is an error here that uh, guest pass warning, no passwords explicitly specified. So I'm using the best available HTML parser for this system. XL, XML. This usually isn't a problem but if you're running this code in another system use it for a different virtual environment it may be may use a different as a behavior the code that caused this warning is on line 10 of the script so on line 10 of this script yeah so we need to to get explicitly define this which I found it weird because when I'm when I'm running it on on uh, on Airflow, it doesn't want me to define it as this. So, but let us define it. Then when I'm pushing it to production, we are going to change. But if you know why it's behaving like this, then you can also tell me in the comments. Let me run this again. Oh. Um, did we print the results? Because we're supposed to.
Okay, so this is going to make us do a lot of debugging. Let me first print here. Let's edit. Then I run. Okay, so we can see the data dictionary here, which is fine. So, uh, okay. Then when we post it to here, post to API. Oh, post to API, we just find it, but we didn't call the, the function. We need to solve this function called API post. I was wondering what's going on. Dot API post. So this is how post to API looks like. So dot API post is what I've added here. So let me run it again. And voila. So this is posted and that. So tomorrow we are going to to create the API and then we will uncomment this part here where we are posting it to API. So that's all about scraping fuel. Uh, your challenge that I'm going to give you for this weekend is to try to write a class that will help you to scrape um, weather and uh, also have this functionality of post to API. But if you cannot write it, uh, we'll also leave the link to the description for my file that helps in scraping the weather and see if you can understand. If you don't understand, you can leave a comment also um, under this video so that you can start with it on, on Monday. Yeah, so until Monday, uh, have a great weekend. And uh, on Monday, we're going to um, work on the API and to make sure that everything that is posted, um, the, MP the endpoints for the API are ready and the API is running. So until then, whatever you plan, please share with someone at work or at school. Um, and have a great weekend. Bye.